Hi everyone, this topic is about the disorders of the reproductive system. And uh, this, in these uh, slides, we will be discussing about infertility, the STDs, menstrual disorders, as well as the female and the male neoplasia. To begin with, Infertility is the inability to conceive a child or sustain pregnancy to birth after at least a year of unprotected sexual intercourse. So, ang isang couple, if hindi pa umaabot ng one year after unprotected sexual intercourse, hindi pa agad yan dinadiagnose na infertility. Now, uh, because most couples have the uh, potential to conceive but they are less able to do this without additional help, yung term na subfertility is more often used today. On the other hand, yung term naman na sterility, it's the inability to conceive because of a known condition. Female infertility, inability to conceive or deliver a live infant after three consecutive pregnancies, while male infertility, inability to impregnate a woman under the same conditions. Ang primary infertility, yung couple, never been pregnant or never impregnated. Ang secondary infertility naman, pregnant once, then unable to conceive again. Remember that when engaging in coitus at least four times a week, 50% of couples will conceive within 6 months and 85% within 12 months. But couples who actually engage in coitus every day may actually have more difficulty conceiving than those who space every other day. This is because uh, of lower sperm count per ejaculation. There are several reasons why infertility occurs. Some of the factors include inadequate sperm count in males. Normally, there should be at least 20 million sperm per ml of semen or 50 million per ejaculation. Dapat at least 50% are motile and 30% normal in shape and form. Another is ejaculation problems. It could be because of psychological or chronic disorders such as CVA or having had stroke, diabetes mellitus, Parkinson's disease, or side effects of some medications. Also, erectile dysfunction or the impotence, inability to achieve erection, um, can be a factor. Uh, a drug called sildenafil or Viagra can help achieve erection. Um, may premature ejaculation then, where ejaculation occurs before penetration. It may be common among adolescents, but it will improve until the male is more experienced. Female causes basically include an ovulation or the absence of ovulation. Maaring dahil sa Turner syndrome, it's a congenital abnormality, chromosomal abnormality, also because of hormonal imbalances, presence of ovarian tumor, may mga radioactive substances, it could be because of a general ill health, poor diet, or even stress. And lastly, it could be because of tubal transport, uterine, cervical, or vaginal problems. Nagkaroon ng scarring, nung nagkaroon ng infection before, pelvic inflammatory disease, merong matagal na IUD na nakakabit, there could be tumors, endometriosis, or other infections. There are several ways to do fertility testing one of which is semen analysis. Also, there are tests that will help determine if the sperm can effectively penetrate ovum. Also, if there is presence of antibody against sperm. Another are tests that will determine how well ovulation occurs, how patent the reproductive organs are, such as fallopian tube, uterus. 
they're also tested to visualize the entire uterus, reproductive organs, as well as the abdominal contents. Now, in a small portion of couples, no known cause for subfertility can be discovered. Possible problems of either partner alone are not significant, but when combined, it is sufficient enough to create subfertility among the couple. Now, this is very discouraging. But of course, uh, we can still offer to continue to try to conceive, uh, possibly through assisted reproductive technique, um, adopt, or have a child-free life. There are ways to manage infertility, one of which is by increasing sperm count and motility. How? Abstain koito 7 to 10 days para maging mas okay ang sperm count during sexual intercourse. Ligation varicocele, if varicocele is present, which can impede with the effectivity of the sperm. And change in lifestyle. Kung may mga vices, most especially. Second is by reducing the presence of infection. Treat the different reproductive infections, whether male or female. Ibase sa mga cultural report para alam kung paano effectively madedestroy yung mga causative agents ng infection. Third is through hormone therapy. One of which is taking GnRH or clomiphene citrate or clomid among females, it will stimulate ovulation. Another is uh, conjugated estrogen if the condition is uh, because of a scant tenacious vaginal secretion na nag impede sa effective fertilization. And lastly, progesterone vaginal suppository para sa mga luteal phase problems. Surgery naman, no, if uh, may mga ligated tubes to reopen it, ganun din ang mga removal ng uterine tumors if they are present. In uh, assistant reproductive techniques, one is through therapeutic insemination. Here, wala yung natural sexual intercourse. I-inject via vagina yung donor sperm. It could be from the sperm of the couple itself or the male or another um, male's sperm. And then, natural fertilization siya, no? uh, natural implantation, and the rest will follow. Sa in vitro fertilization, wala yung sexual intercourse, hindi rin natural ang fertilization. Because here, sa test tube, nagpa-fertilize yung egg and sperm. It could be egg and sperm of both the couple or any um, donor on, on another hand. And then, kapag nabuo na, tsaka ngayon i-implant no, sa uterus, pwedeng sa uterus mismo nung nanay, or there could be a surrogate mother. Uh, still, natural implantation process. Adoption, ito yung nag involve ng most extensive legal process. Or lastly, a child-free living. The next topics now are on STDs or sexually transmitted diseases. We'll be discussing herpes, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. First is herpes. It's caused by the herpes simplex virus type 2 and not the type 1. Si type 2 yung STD. Dito merong painful vesicles on genitalia, both external and internal. Pag sinabing vesicles, meron siyang laman na liquid sa loob. There is no cure kasi viral siya. Treatment is also asymptomatic and <coughs> maaring gumamit ng antiviral such as acyclovir, it can reduce severity and duration of the exacerbation. If a woman has active herpes at the end of the pregnancy, CS birth may be indicated because 
a virus may be lethal to the neonate. If the infection recurs, no, um, maaring dahil ito sa nagkaroon ng infection, stress, or even menstruation. In the photo, you can see that the mother's genitalia has active herpes because of vesicles. Pero nung nalipat siya doon sa baby, nagkaroon siya ng blisters no, all over the body, especially in the trunk area. Second is chlamydia. It's currently the most common STD. Here, there are no vesicles, but there's heavy, purulent vaginal discharge, which can also be asymptomatic at times. Nakatransmit siya sa fetus at birth, it can cause neonatal ophthalmia. Kaya ngayon, uh, normal na intervention, yung paglalagay ng prophylactic treatment ng erythromycin, sa neonates eyes. If untreated, chlamydia can lead to PID. The next STD is gonorrhea, which is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea. Similar to chlamydia, pareho sila na merong heavy purulent vaginal discharge but often asymptomatic also in females. It can be transmitted to fetus at birth and the same with media, it can cause neonatal ophthalmia, but it can also cause sepsis as well. Treatment is penicillin, but allergic clients may be treated with erythromycin or cephalosporins. It's important that all sexual contacts must be treated as well. The fourth is syphilis, caused by a spirochete treponema pallidum. This is somehow um, dangerous for the fetus because it crosses the placenta after 16th week of pregnancy. Ang diagnosis made usually by a dark field exam and serologic test, yun yung VDRL, Venereal Disease Research Laboratory. Ang treatment nito, similar penicillin or erythromycin. In the photo, you can see here yung three, yung triad symptoms ng syphilis. Initially, may cancre, it's an open sore sa genitalia, may sugat sa genitalia, and <clears throat> lymph adenopathy. The bad thing is, kahit wala kang gawin dito, the initial symptoms may disappear without treatment in four to six weeks. Yun pala, nagpo-progress na yung infection. Paglabas ng secondary symptoms, may rashes na, malay, alopecia. And this too may disappear in several weeks without treatment. Initially, pag lumabas na yung tertiary symptoms, delikado siya because it recur later in life and affect any organ system, especially the heart and the brain. Next are the menstrual disorders. Well, you know very well the meaning of these uh, terms. Dysmenorrhea is painful mens. Painful ovulation is metal schmerz. Amenorrhea is cessation of mens. Ang normal lang na may cessation of mens ay yung mga buntis and menopause. Menorrhagia is heavy menstruation. Metrorrhagia is uh, bleeding in between periods. Pero may mga babae na malakas ng magmens, tapos madalas pa silang magmens. Uh, Menometrorrhagia. Now, postmenopausal clients usually experience vaginal dryness and even dyspareunia. This is because of estrogen deficiency. So, nakakaroon sila ng painful sexual intercourse, we can teach them to use water-soluble lubricants for intercourse. Next are the female neoplasias. Fibrocystic breast disease is a breast tumor that is benign. Pag malignant, it's breast cancer. Myoma is a uterine tumor that is benign. 
pag malignant uterine cancer. Polycystic ovary syndrome, ito naman yung mga benign na tumors in the ovary and if it is malignant ovarian cancer. And lastly, cervical cancer. Fibrocystic breast disease now is the most common benign breast lesion. Usually, it's caused by H. pylori, can be transmitted during sexual foreplay. It can occur as early as puberty, pero common din siya late adolescence hanggang 45 years old. Now, you can see the symptoms include a freely movable and well-delineated breast lumps that feels painful, tender, and stretched, lalo na pag kinapa. It may be visible on the surface of the breast and usually palpated in the upper outer quadrants. Consistency may be firm and hard, but sometimes they are also soft and flexible. It may shrink or disappear during pregnancy or lactation. Totally, they can disappear with menopause. What is the management? Provide simple analgesic, do warm compress, avoid trauma, and wear firm bra support to relieve discomfort. Also, avoid tea, cola, coffee, chocolates because they lower the risk of cystic formation. It's also important to lower sodium intake or shorter use of diuretic just before menses to reduce fluid retention sa breast. Cystic aspiration also can reduce the size of the cyst and provide fluid for biopsy. Now there is a drug called danazole. It can suppress estrogen formation in ovaries and reduce the symptoms of fibrocystic breast disease. And lastly, yung surgical removal ng cyst. It's also important to do monthly self-breast exam. Importante ang self-breast exam as a screening test to actually detect early stage, lalo na kung ito ay breast cancer. Kailan dapat mag-perform ng uh, breast self-examination? Best is 1 week or 7 to 2 days, 7 to 10 days after the first day of menstrual flow. By that time, tapos na yung menstruation at hindi congested yung katawan ng babae. Importante din yung annual breast ultrasound. Lalo na yung may mga high risk of having breast cancer if you have family members or parent <coughs> with a breast cancer. Mammography, it's an x-ray, um, so contraindicated siya if pregnant. Importante ang baseline mammography at 35 years old. Now, when you are teaching clients who will undergo mammography, uh, you have to teach them to avoid cream, powder, deodorant on the breast or underarm because these substances can be shown on the x-ray. Very uncomfortable then ang mammography. May discomfort dito because the breasts are compressed. Um, pero mabilis lang naman yung procedure. In less than an hour, um, yung test matatapos na. Breast cancer is the most common neoplasm in women. In fact, siya yung leading cause ng death in women ages 40 to 44 years old. What are the assessment findings? First, of course, may palpation ka ng lump. It's usually in the upper outer quadrant. Kaya pag magbo-breast self-exam, do not forget to include palpating or checking the upper outer quadrant of the breast, including the axilla. The skin is usually dimpled, yung skin ng breast, may nipple discharge, which is not uh, breast milk for breastfeeding women, merong obvious asymmetry of breasts because among women, it's normal that the breasts are asymmetrical, but here, there's really an obvious asymmetry. And lastly, sa so surgical biopsy, will be revealed the definitive diagnosis. 
meron ding mga tumor markers. Glycoprotein CA125, glycoprotein CA15-3, and carcinoembryonic antigen or CEA. Ito yung mga tumor markers. Anyway, in your upper nursing courses, meron kayong oncological nursing, you will further discuss there the different types of cancer. Now, uh, merong mga babae na merong mga higher risks for developing breast cancer. And these women, yung mga naligravida, yung may mga history mismo ng breast cancer, ang parent or immediate relative, plus of course yung usual exposure sa mga carcinogens. These are the different stages and grading of breast cancer. So in the slide, you will see the different descriptions. When you say staging, it refers to how far cancer has spread. From the area nung merong cancer hanggang saan siya nag-spread out. And grading refers to how abnormal the cells appear. As a medical management, surgical excision would include simple lumpectomy, which is removal of the lump only, simple mastectomy, re removal of the breast, modified radical mastectomy, removal of entire breast tissue, surrounding tissues, pero may tinitira usually uh, na magagamit, especially for those women na gustong magkaroon ng breast no, augmentation or artificial in the future. MRM is the usual surgical procedure used for breast cancer. Radical mastectomy is removal of everything, including all the tissues and surrounding tissues of the breasts. Yung adjuvant therapy or adjuvant treatment used in combination with the surgery, which is true for all types of breast cancer. And that would include chemotherapy. If you remember in pharmacology, the use of the very strong chemicals to kill cancer cells, hormones, and also radiation. Another neoplasia or a new growth is myoma. This is a benign tumor. <coughs> it's a uterine fibroid or leomyomas of the uterine muscles. So ito ay nag-originate from the myometrium. It began as a simple proliferation of smooth muscle cells and increased growth is stimulated usually by stress within the myometrium itself. There are several classifications of myoma. Intramural, kung nandun lang siya sa uterine wall, Submucosal, under the endometrium. Subserosal, if it is in the outer surface of the uterus. It's a wandering or parasitic myoma if it attaches to tissues other than the uterus. Intraligamentary, if it is within the pelvic ligaments. And lastly, cervical, if it is within the cervix. What are, what are the manifestations when a woman has myoma, there is usually an abnormal excessive uterine bleeding. Anemic siya kasi nga malakas siya magmens. There are feelings of tiredness, weakness, or lethargy. Merong urinary frequency or retention as the myoma enlarges. Abdominal pain na localized, lalo na kung nasa ang area yung myoma. Dysparunia, there could be a foul or watery vaginal discharge, and sometimes there is also infertility. When a woman has myoma, as long as wala siyang nararamdaman na manifestations, hindi naman siya agad nire-require na i-remove. But with medical management, myomectomy is the removal of myoma. No, but even if you've removed myoma because it's a tumor that has proliferated from the myometrium, maaari siyang umulit. 
uh, in this case, maaaring i-recommend yung removal mismo ng uterus or hysterectomy. But this is only recommended for women na may mga anak na or matanda na. Subtotal hysterectomy, just a portion of the uterus, especially the area where myoma um, has proliferated. Total hysterectomy, the entire uterus, or TABSO, which is total abdominal hysterectomy and bilateral selfingo or ophorectomy. Uterine cancer, on the other hand, is a cancer that arises from the endometrium as a result of the abnormal growth of the cells that have the ability to invade or spread to other parts of the body. If diagnosed early, ang uterine cancer ay may favorable outcome. Usually, it occurs mostly um, after menopause. Ang kanyang overall 5-year survival rate is actually more than 80%. Also, diagnosed through biopsy, endometrial biopsy to be specific, through dilatation and curettage. Nadetect din ito through pelvic exam, especially after menopause. Remember that pap smear is not useful sa uterine cancer detection. Pap smear is only for cervical cancer detection. Here in the photo, uh, we can see dilatation and curettage to get endometrial samples or tissues for checking whether the tissues there are regarded as benign or malignant. Manifestations of uterine cancer include vaginal bleeding or spotting after menopause or long, heavy, frequent episodes of bleeding in women before menopause. If you look at the manifestations, mostly are about bleeding because symptoms other than bleeding are not common in uterine cancer. But those uh, include white, clear vaginal discharge in menopause, enlarged uterus, lower abdominal pain, dyspareunia, painful urination, or pyometra or uterine infection. Risk factors can also increase having uterine cancer, and these include obesity, having diabetes mellitus, having breast cancer, using tamoxifen, a chemotherapy drug, being anoligravid, late menopause, increasing age plus having high levels of estrogen. These are the staging and grading of uterine cancer, again, depending on how invasion occurs and how um, the growth or the cancer looks like. Surgical management for uterine cancer would first include TABSO or total removal of the reproductive organs. Second is lymph adenectomy or a lymph node dissection. Ito naman yung surgical removal of one or more groups of lymph nodes. It is almost always performed as part of surgical treatment ng maraming klase ng cancer. And third is cytoreductive surgery. It's also a surgical procedure used to remove tumors. Pag sinabing cytoreduction, it refers to reducing the number of tumor cells. And it considerably increases life expectancy and nagre-reduce siya din ng rate ng mga cancer recurrence. Adjuvant therapy includes chemotherapy. In uterine cancer, drugs used are paclitaxel, doxorubicin, cisplatin, carboplatin. This is used when surgery is not indicated, uh, mostly, no? Pwede rin siya for palliative and longer survival. Hormonal therapy like medroxyprogesterone acetate, it's a tumor suppressor. 
And lastly, yung radiotherapy, we have this um, procedure called vaginal brachytherapy, which is um, uh, a radiation therapy, no? invasive siya, naka-implant, yung radioactive substance. So that woman is also radioactive. Kaya naka-confine sa hospital. But external beam radiotherapy naman, outpatient, but the radioactive substance is um, exposed no para lang siyang machine no na naka-direct kung nasaan yung cancer cells na um minamanage this can be used radiotherapy for uterine cancer is effective only for stage 1 and stage 2 polycystic ovary syndrome it's a set of symptoms due to elevated androgen levels in females. It's a common endocrine disorder in female ages 18 to 44 years old. Ano yung usual diagnostic criteria? One, may oligoovulation or an ovulation among women. Second, is excess androgen activity among women. And third, may polycystic ovaries. The usual signs and symptoms include menstrual disorders such as oligomenorrhea, halos hindi nagmemens, or amenorrhea. Infertility, may chronic anovulation kasi because of the presence of many cysts. Third is the increased androgen activity in a female body, kaya may possible acne, hirsutism, kung magmemens naman, menometrorrhagia, or sometimes may androgenic alopecia. And lastly, metabolic syndrome such as obesity plus possible insulin resistance. Management in polycystic ovary syndrome includes 1. Dieting to lose weight. It's the most effective to restore normal ovulation and menstruation. Kailangan significant part of carbohydrates would come from fruits, vegetables, and whole grain sources. Second is medicating with oral contraceptives and also with metformin. It's an oral hypoglycemic drug. Yung oral contraceptives, it binds with testosterone, reducing hirsutism, and regulating the mens. Yung metformin naman, it treats insulin resistance and it supports ovulation. Third, can be given clomiphene citrate for infertility to promote ovulation, although not all are infertile. Fourth, the standard contraceptive pill, giving of spironolactone as anti-androgens for hirsutism and acne. Yung progesterone, uh, it should be avoided because of its androgenic effects. And lastly, regulate menstruation with pills. This can be given if fertility is not the aim. Next is ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer occurs when abnormal cells in the ovary begin to multiply out of control and form a tumor. Here, in ovarian cancer, symptoms can be overlooked. Uh, kasi maraming symptoms yung maari mo rin makita sa ibang disease conditions. One is unexpected vaginal bleeding. There could be constipation, nausea, indigestion, or appetite loss, weight loss, breathlessness, or fatigue. Risk factors would include a family history of ovarian or breast cancer, usually close relative. And uh, with breast cancer, some opt to remove ovary as well as a form of prevention. Second risk factor is age over 63 years old. 50% of cases of ovarian cancer are beyond this age. Third, children after age 35 
or never having children. Breastfeeding and use of contraceptive pills lower the risk of having ovarian cancer. Fourth is undergoing hormone replacement therapy after menopause. Remember that the longer the usage, the higher the risk. Fifth is obesity and overweight, usually common in those with BMI over 30. And last, high levels of androgen, uh, diet, and use of talcum powder. Although researchers have not yet proven the link, but these risk factors increase the risk of having ovarian cancer. Again, these are the staging and grading of ovarian cancer. Localized, it affects only the ovaries or the fallopian tubes. Regional, if it has spread to nearby organs, gaya ng uterus, and distant, if it is present elsewhere in the body, such as the lungs or the liver. Meron ding iba-ibang types of ovarian cancer. Could be epithelial, if it occurs in the lining of the surface of the ovary, germ cells, which will become egg cells for reproduction, and stromal cells, which release hormones and link up the structures of the ovaries. Diagnosis of ovarian cancer is first via pelvic ultrasound, pelvic examination, or a transvaginal ultrasound. Ito ay mga sound wave na nagdedetect ng tumor, but this cannot actually determine if it is cancerous. Second is a biomarker specific for ovarian cancer. However, it can also be affected with uterine cancer, and this is a blood test to measure the cancer antigen 125 or CA-125. And lastly, of course, the confirmatory test is biopsy. Treatment, again, similar with the previous discussions, is a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. The last of the female neoplasias is cervical cancer. It's a cancer that occurs in the cells of the cervix. Most cases are linked to infections caused by HPV or the human papilloma virus. Remember that the cervical cancer cells grow slowly. So when detected early, there's time to find and treat before serious problems occur. Improve screening ito by the use of pap test or the pap smear. Ages 35 to 44 are most likely to get it, but also in women over 65, especially those who don't do regular screening. Pap smear is taken for early detection and diagnosis of precancerous and cancerous conditions of the cervix, vulva, or vagina. In the photo, you can see how to obtain a traditional pap smear using a vaginal speculum. Uh, the specimen is collected from the endocervix, the cervix, and the vaginal area. This will be tested under laboratory conditions, again, for the presence of abnormal cells. It can also reveal inflammatory and infectious diseases. Now, when to have pap smear? According to the American Cancer Society, 21 years old or 3 years after being sexually active, kailangan nagpapapap smear. And then, um, kung after 30, every 2 to 3 years old. If you are high risk, kailangan more frequent ang pag-perform ng pap smear. In the table, 11.3, you can see the interpretation of pap smears, uh, whether the analysis is benign, with inflammation, may dysplasia, may mga lesions, carcinoma, or there is already invasive cancer. 
This procedure is called colposcopy. It's another way to determine cervical cancer through visualization of the cervix. Maaari ding gawin dito ang cervical biopsy as a definitive diagnosis. Important nursing interventions after the treatment or after the test is of course to keep the perineum clean and dry. Important to change pads frequently. Teach women to not lift heavy, heavy objects. No intercourse muna in two weeks to prevent bleeding. And of course, kailangan i-report ng patient kung magkaroon man siya ng excessive bleeding. Risk factors towards development of cervical cancer include having or started having sexual intercourse before the age of 16 or within the year of menarche. Also, having multiple sexual partners, contraceptive use, usually longer than 5 years, smoking, having a weak immune system, and presence of another STD. Now, Prevention is very important and prevention is achieving or avoiding the risk factors. A good thing is there's already an HPV vaccine, uh, Gardasil, in the form of Gardasil or other brands. It's given as an IM injection of three doses. Again, it's against the human papilloma virus, which is a cause of having cervical cancer and also importante ang cervical screening through pap smear. What are the symptoms of cervical cancer? There could be dyspareunia or painful sexual intercourse, unusual vaginal bleeding or discharge, pelvic pain, loss of appetite and weight loss, and there is uh, fatigue or general body weakness. Management. Precancerous lesions can be uh, managed through cryosurgery, diathermy, laser surgery, or hysterectomy. All of this no, destroys precancerous area with little damage to nearby tissue. So, yung cryosurgery, yan yung freezing. No, um, diathermy, yan yung cauterization or burning. Yung laser surgery, meron namang laser beam vapor. And of course, hysterectomy, you already keep the woman from getting the cancer. Uh, ngayon, pag may cervical cancer na, again, it's a combination of what I have mentioned before, surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. Next are the male neoplasias. BPH is a benign uh, tumor in the prostate and second, malignant, yun yung prostate cancer. BPH is prostate enlargement characterized by non-cancerous increase in its size. Manifestations include urinary frequency. Uh, there is trouble starting to urinate. There is weak and dribbling urination. Sometimes meron talagang inability to urinate or may loss of bladder control. And lastly, yung mga late stage, may blood in the urine. In BPH, prostate is pressing on the urethra. That's the reason why it makes it difficult to urinate. Meron siyang complications dahil nga affected ang urination. It can cause UTI, it can cause bladder stones, or it can cause also chronic kidney problems. The cause of BPH is actually unclear. It typically begins after age 40 years old and half of males over age 50 and above are affected. Dito sa BPH, tumataas ang PSA or the prostate-specific antigen, although it does not increase the risk of prostate cancer. 
there are some medications that can help manage PPH. First group of drugs are the alpha blockers, and the second is the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Of course, diagnosis is made through symptoms after ruling out other possible conditions. So, ang doxazosine and tamsulosine, these are alpha blockers which relax smooth muscles in the prostate and bladder neck. Therefore, nagdi-decrease yung blockage ng urine flow at nakakaihi ng maayos. Next is finasteride and dutasteride. These are 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and they inhibit the hormone responsible for prostate enlargement. So basically, these drugs help the male achieve better urination. Now, TERP, or transurethral resection of the prostate, is a urological operation or surgery usually used to treat BPH. As the name indicates, it's performed by visualizing the prostate using or through the urethra. And then, dito nila remove yung tissues by electrocautery or sharp dissection. This procedure is done with the use of spinal or general anesthetic. Kasi masakit siya dahil may tubo na ipinapaso directly in the urethra of the male. A large triple lumen catheter is inserted through the urethra and this will now irrigate and drain the bladder after the surgical procedure is complete. After the procedure, ang mga nurses dapat monitor ang continuous bladder irrigation. It removes clots from the bladder and it prevents obstruction of the catheter. The outcome is excellent. Considered at least 80 to 90 percent of BPH patients recover well after the surgery. Pinuturo din natin yung self catheterization. It's uh, usually done intermittently. This will relieve urinary retention, although UTI is common. Again, pinaka-importante yung pag-monitor ng continuous bladder irrigation after the surgical procedure. In this photo, you can see how TERP is done. Last is prostate cancer, which is cancer that occurs in the prostate gland. It usually grows slowly and may not cause serious harm right away. When detected early and still confined to the prostate gland, there is a better chance of successful treatment. And again, according to the American Cancer Society 2019, around 1 in 9 males will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. However, only 1 in 41 will die because of it. The risk factors are age over 55, so the elderly are more at risk, African-American race, which are usually black men, family history of having prostate and also breast cancer. Smoking men are linked to higher risk of dying, and obesity with smoking doubles the risk of having prostate cancer. A screening test, which is PSA, or prostate-specific antigen, can be used to detect prostate cancer early. Ang recommendation ulit ng American Cancer Society is yearly PSA and digital rectal exam at 50 years old, especially if we want early detection. Ang PSA, it's a protein made only by the prostate. If it is low, the prostate is healthy. If it is high, it may indicate cancer. Although, pwede rin siyang mag-indicate ng BPH or even infection or inflammation of the prostate. Ang digital rectal exam naman, if you palpate 
there's a feeling of an abnormal shape or thickness to the prostate. At age 50, usually, kailangan itong ginagawa, but younger is recommended if the male is considered high risk. Of course, lastly, confirmatory test is through tissue biopsy na maaaring gawin through digital rectal exam. It's the confirmatory test. Prostate cancer actually has no signs and symptoms in its early stages. But as the prostate enlarges, again, the usual manifestations would include <coughs> different urination problems. Interrupted yung flow ng urine, sudden urge to urinate or frequent urination, trouble starting urine, or umiihi na but there's a problem emptying the bladder completely. There could also be painful or burning urination, blood in urine or semen, late signs yung pain in the back, hips, or pelvis, plus breathlessness, tiredness, dizziness, and anemia. Treatment of early stages of prostate cancer would include monitoring the PSA. Again, with early stages, there's no immediate action as the risk <clears throat> may outweigh the benefit. Second is surgery through prostatectomy. It can be performed through laparoscopy or open surgery. Third is radiation through brachytherapy internal or external beam external. So again, <coughs> sa brachytherapy may implant or yung external beam merong mga intensity modulated beams uh, radiated no, to, ra to elicit radiation towards the prostate gland. And lastly, when advanced stages or systemic Surgery may not be helpful anymore. Uh, it's a combination now of chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, or immunotherapy. That's the end of our discussion on reproductive health disorders.